Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Um, so these last three talks should be pretty fun. Um, the theme is consequences, but I sort of veered from the theme as usual, so it will be the consequence of creativity or something like that. Um, so the first talk that we have is from Tony. Tony and I actually know each other probably longer than anybody else here. We went to architecture school together back at Cornell. And Sonny also went to Cornell Architecture School, so we have like a, a Cornell theme here, I guess. Um, so when we think of hardware, think of this as like really big hardware, um, hardware of physical space and how you make it and um, the process of maybe old school a little bit and how it's changed. So uh, here you go. So, thanks, Lily, Lily, for that. Um, OK, I'm an architect, a little different field, but I think it's all relatable. Um, I'm going to talk today about my own home, but also our work and the transition in the design process from physical paper modeling being around. Uh, oh, sorry. Should I start again? OK. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, the transition in our firm um, using 3D software and 3D print models and how to incorporate that into the design process uh, that we find important. I borrowed from uh, Magritte at the top there, say Nest, my Maison. This is a photo of my house, but it's a photography uh, uh, piece. Uh, the house is actually, it's split right here. This is actually a reflection in glass. So it's a, it's a metaphor for the house. It's, it's a physical part of the house, but the idea that it's a suspended form in space and sort of the ideas that we work on. But realistically, um, we have a critical practice. We're investigating, and this is pre-3D uh, software, but investigating uh, surface transformation and uh, geometric and material changes uh, in buildings. But we also feel that we're artists and we're sculpting we're sculpting space and form, and how to do that, and this with the pre-tools, um, self-similar objects uh, through group clusters, one-directional self-similar objects, which means each roof, this isn't a pointer, but uh, it goes in a different direction but relates to itself, and you're creating a movement of fluidity, but done with very simple structural techniques uh, to produce it, and these are projects in that, uh, those magazines that I just showed you, a 12-year investigation uh, different ways to do it. Uh, here's one about fluidity. These are physical models we designed physically and then bring it into the, the 2D software and 3D software to create construction documents, but we're not designing in a 3D program of any kind at this, at this point. And this is 2000. And then here's my own home, which was actually also basically trying to revolutionize and, and use design ideas, but without the software availability at that point. Um, this is my house. It's unfolded. It's a one piece of paper. Here it is folded up. Uh, and then we uh, created two-directional movement, which it was, became uh, proved very difficult without using 3D information to do it. Uh, here's a printed model uh, years after it was built uh, for the MoCA Museum. You can just see the overall forms of what you're going to see in the photos in, in just a second. So you can see the process, the form. So here we are. And so I tried to add it to relate to today and the consequences of democratizing contemporary architectural ideas being discussed in major universities since the 90s, um, used only for a few public budgeted buildings, you know, at the billion dollar level, basically, that I'm sure you're all aware of in the last decade. So the consequence is project time. It took two years for me to convince the city to let me build this, and it took uh, six years of construction from 03 to 09. And uh, here's just the 15 different sections we had to build to, to sort of be able to fabricate this elsewhere and then erect it on the site. And here you can see basically built, there's three loops. We went, started from the back floor, then the, the roof wall, and then the next piece while they infilled the wood and until we got to the final product. And that was a two and a half year process just for the steel wood part. And that's why the house took a, took a while actually. And so here we have it. It's that single articulated plane that you saw in the paper model that transforms itself into this hovering object held up by pylons. Uh, this is the back section. It's an open read section. One of the other projects also talked about this. This allows you to connect to the site uh, purely in one direction and uh, for people to understand that it is from one plane or it's a one directional movement piece. 
and uh, uh, here's some uh, my, my neighbor's roof, and it's uh, split materially, uh, white and black, to talk about the fact that there are roof walls and floor walls. There are no walls. In other words, no vertical nature of this. And there's no horizontal nature of this. They are both the same, either floor wall or roof wall. It's a shot from the back, from the side. Tell me if I'm clicking fast or anything. And so here we have then the uh, interior, interior of the main level, the public spaces. Um, hey, well, it's a light-filled space connected to the outside, Southern California, a way of living. It's open and fluid. The, the forms are open and fluid. The idea of spatial living is also open and fluid. Here's from that front object that you saw before. Is it at, as you can see through the house, it's a Y, so it's split level. And you can, if I could res this up like I normally do on my iPad, you could just see through the entire house at one time. This house is about 2,400 square feet, but it feels like 5,000 because only those size houses have vistas that are 90 feet long within a space and, and, and such. And so when I said democratize before, this is on a normal site. It's in Venice Beach. It's on a normal flat lot, small lot, 40 by 120. Um, 2,400 square feet, average home in America is that size. But, and it uses ideas and forms and, and technology inside for everyone. And this is what architects, this is what we talk about with each other, what, what we feel the future is. But you've only seen it in a few public buildings around in China and by Frank Geary and such because there isn't the technology in the construction industry to, to build it yet. I mean, that's what I would hope you guys could come up with. When Zaha Hadid builds a building, She's having car manufacturers make the skin panels for the building because they understand how to build in curves and, and 3D. And so again, this took me six years to produce. Here's a living room space. The front of the street, but well protected. When you, um, indoor, outdoor, but still calm. You know, the movement doesn't mean that, that, you're, that you're frenetic in the space. Actually, people, when they come over, they comment on how quiet it is. Now, it's glass wall, so it's really not that quiet at some times, but your mind thinks you're outdoors still. And so it's quiet for being outdoors, and you, you adjust to that. It's a very zen space, actually, within, within it. Uh, here's the master bedroom. It's a, it's a glass room in the middle of the house so that it does, you can see through the entire home. It sort of gives you a landscape feel without having landscape of like mountains and extreme home locations in the Aegean Sea and such. Just looking back down through. And so... Some of the projects that are in construction right now um, went back from the two-directional ideas of my house back to the one-directional just because the timeline it takes to build these things. Um, we're reserving. At, here's something that's across from the Getty Museum. It's about to go into construction. We're just waiting for the final permits. And it's a group cluster. Again, that one-directional idea, but that gives you the overall movement. These are projects where the client's like, we'd like you to build it in one year. And... Uh, we don't have to worry about uh, inventing new construction techniques to do it, but we can get these spatial ideas and, and form ideas of what we're interested in. You can see the paper model in, in the last shot and this shot. It, the computer is used to detail it, to look at materiality and detail things at larger levels and give it to the structural engineers, but the design is all in the paper model, which is why I've juxtaposed it on the screen to you, that it's as detailed at this level, the design level, as the renders are. But now here's our first house in 2015. I'll go back to this paper model. We started this way again. But now we've taken it into, into the computer program and in the flat fold. And then we brought it into Maya. And we're creating the fluidity. And now it's only going to be done within the computer. So this is the first residential that we're doing in that way. I'll show you some commercial work and how we've been doing it in commercial work for about three years now. This is the same house. Here's the, the renders of what's going uh, to the city and the engineers. And you can see the more fluid forms that are starting to appear from it. Those are solar panels, that, that black gray ribbon on top there. Uh, this is a competition from a while ago. Uh, it just transitions to the commercial projects. And uh, again, the, the folded forms, the one directional group clustering, self-referencing forms. We don't rely on past traditional forms. We're also not modernists in the sense of a, a box and glass is, is modern space. It's a figural space, of, a space of fluid movement. And the only way to make that understandable is to give cues like that open section I discussed and also create forms that relate to each other at least so they have their own relationship.
And actually, it's kind of weak architecture, weak form architecture. A cloud looks like something different to all of you. If you put this next to six buildings in the location, we've, we've related it to those buildings on geometric levels that are subtle, but they're there and your mind will find them. This is just very early renders. I'm putting the dates on this for you folks so you understand that this is 1990s, the, the render levels that these things are. So the commercial work, this is Natalie Tai. Again, the last uh, building that we did with kind of in physical 3D, right? Paper, paper models. And you can see why it's a one directional in that sense. And some others, Thai House. Beverly Boulevard on a commercial street. We basically, that idea of open section, and you drive right through it, very LA car culture. So the facade includes the driveway. Uh, it's an art gallery. Uh, House of Pies. Um, this is uh, three commercial projects. The first one, which was drawn a few years ago, but it's at the original location of the restaurant, so we haven't done it yet because he doesn't want to tear that restaurant down. It's a single direction. This was made through paper model and then rendered in here and developed further in 3D. But we didn't design it in 3D in the sense of a 3D form. And it's the last transition to this. This is House of Pies. It's actually been called the Gateway Building to Venice Beach. Uh, it, it took three years to get through zoning approval with all the committees and the Coastal Commission and all that. It's in structural phase with Arab engineers who did uh, the nest and also the water pavilion for the China uh, Olympics. And, uh, this is a parametric building. So this is our first parametric building, truly 3D designed. Um, so typically, as I said before, we started with paper model and then brought it from an idea model, what we call a junk model, to a, a model that we've worked on for many, many hours, and then in the computer. But actually, this one's reverse. It's here, it's here, and now this is in the computer. It's just we like to start in the computer with kind of a, a white model, a paper model, but in the computer. And it helps us transition in the way that we think about non-material yet, just about form, just about the difference between solid and void. So a solid and void condition, which is how we start with our buildings. So here you can see the first digital print model, the early spatial of it after it was brought into Maya. You can see it's very curvilinear. Here's the second print model. Uh, the framing and some detail ideas are brought out and obviously at a larger scale because that's how you develop from small scale to larger and larger. It's a scalar process until a building that we occupy. Um, bring it into the, in the programs to produce it. And uh, here's some more renders that, of what it's going to look like. And again, these are about two years old. So the, the last one I'll show you, the render level is even better as, as software changes. I think we have enough time. I have a little video in here that I'm going to give you before I show you the last project. It works. I didn't do it. I thought it'd be interesting to uh, show you how we design now using these programs in the same way that we had a physical model that you can turn and cut and rotate and work on. It's here where we're working on the actual structure now, the change of the structure that the engineers are requiring to make this back mesh area that covers over the parking lot to actually be, build, be built. They added all the triangular pieces to it. But our main concern is to keep the floating reading, the pull out of the structure through the skin. But they added that column in the corner there that stops the design. It, it ends the building, and that's not what we're trying to do. So this is literally a movie of, of us working on how to solve that problem. Seems to be going slower than uh, I'm talking, though, at the moment. So. so again, that's isolating the issue, this ending of the spatial forces that don't want to end with a vertical column that the engineers put in, trying to keep the self-similar angles in two directions for the movement. And so obviously, we would we have to make some adjustments. So, And he circles a lot, it seems. but. Uh, so we're stretching out the, the top skin first, which is, again, a mesh and framing system. And of course, that'll solve some issues from some locations, but then we still have the column issue. And so we tilt it in to relate to that bottom wall as well. And 
we've jumped to the actual, the, the final model that the engineers have now. That's a color-coded difference. He's just explaining the angle changes. And I think he'll rotate around once really quickly to show how it keeps the, uh, the dynamics of what we're trying to do. How the center columns they added in uh, are a different color, and they're vertical, and they're about just vertical structure. But the end columns are part of the skin shape of the building, the wrapper that we're discussing, the figural form of the building. As it rolls around, I'll show you our last uh, project. I think we can uh, just giving that reading for you. Again, it now relates to the, the column framing on the outside that was designed uh, intentionally. So take something that changed and then bring it back to the intention of the design idea is what this is showing. We'll pause that and move on. So this is our latest project. So the last project is engineering. It's going to go to building department, start construction in about eight months. This one's in the planning department right now. When it comes out, it will follow suit. It's another house of pies. So these are restaurants. That's, that's why I say democracy. These are, these are restaurants, but they're public buildings in the sense that the other one is on the corner of the start of Venice, uh, the beach community of Venice, which I'm sure you guys have all heard of. And this one is the corner of the Glendale, uh, another city in, down near Los Angeles. And it's the corner of their entire historic business district. Um, historically, not historic in the sense of what the buildings look like. And so it becomes another corner building to, to to hold the site and to welcome people to come into. But they are restaurants. They're functional. They're, they're just functional businesses. And actually, the back flat area is an existing building that we have to tie in just by the codes that are available. And so how do you tie in a parametric form to a square back piece? Here again is in the computer what we call our white paper model and how we designed. There's no paper model for this project at all. It's all just in the computer, and that's where we are now, where, where the paper is, is gone. And it's this ribbon effect that, that ties the old part to the new form. It ties the old cubic building piece to the new forms that aren't square and relatable. And this is that transformative material that just goes around the building geometrically and, and tries and creates a, a new hole. down the street. Here, instead of a, a three-minute movie, I, I just was uh, want to show that real, ad real advantage came. This was a, an incredible improvement over the project as designed. It was designed architectural. I'll say architectural ideas that architects want to discuss with each other, talk about, push for the future, but then it's actually going to be built. And then how is it a building for people to, to, to really occupy and deal with? And uh, so the original concept had the, the metal piece only on top as a cap a solid form that's been vivisected by glass to relate to the old glass piece on the left. And in the end, working with it, we changed it so the ribbon ties everything together. The glass is flipped so the glass pulls through at the bottom so at the restaurants people have street access and view in and out um, to tie it to the community. And the, the wood is really the cap layer. But this would never happen if we didn't use 3D software and tools and rendering because to create a new physical model of this change of the building, and believe me, this is a sea change of the building. I was fought by the guys working with me. Oh, that's, that's not a good idea. Why should we do that? We've been working on this idea for you know, two months or three months at that point. But when you have the capacity to just try what ifs so quickly with software, you should take advantage of it. Right? So you, you just say, at the end of a long day, a 12-hour day, a 10-hour day, you say, let's just try this for 10 minutes, which means an hour and a half. And when it happened, everybody went, oh my god, it's a better project. And it would have never happened if, if 12 years ago. It just wouldn't have occurred that way. So here we are, and this is, this is what I've shown you as the project, and it is the, it is the project. I won't bother you with that <laughs> since I'm running out of time. Just some interior projects right there. And I'm going to end on this one where the, we've created faceted forms are easier to build. When we do curvilinear ones, it's much more difficult. Curvilinear in 3D and 3D direction is the future where we're working on that. We like this idea of space, but I love the juxtaposition of the fabric chair, which has smooth form, and our folded pieces, as they both imbue the same sort of body geometries, right? A, a, not a square architectural space, and certainly not a pedimented historic idea of form, but somehow form that's relatable um, 
to the body. Thank you.